Hello, my name is Joshua Haney and I'm a saxophonist and educator. Today I've got a special video that I've had some requests for in the past few weeks. Put simply, I want to compare some of the newest Selmer Supreme necks in solid silver as well as gold plate to my current horn. I've had a number of people ask me about how the Selmer Supreme necks compare to other Selmer models and hopefully this video can give some people some answers. So the first thing I have with me is the solid silver model. As you can see, they actually lacquer these necks now with a pale gold color to protect the solid silver. But if you look inside at the right angle, you can see that there is indeed silver in there. And then I also have a gold plated neck with me right here, which is still made of brass, but it just has a layer of gold plate. And um, gold actually does not adhere to brass directly, so underneath gold plate you usually have a layer of silver plate as well. Both of these necks will be compared to my usual neck, which is just a standard Selmer Series 3 neck. It's the one that came with the horn. Now I know this comparison doesn't necessarily account for all the other horns in the Selmer range, for example the Series 2 or the Reference 54. However, I think it'll give people at least a good baseline about what to expect regarding changes, compared to my own setup. First, on each neck, I will play a chromatic scale. On the right-hand side over here, you'll be able to see how the intonation compares from note to note. Now, just a total caveat, I'm not a robot, I'm not a perfect player, so there's gonna be a little bit of inconsistency from each result. For total transparency's sake, the app I will be using for monitoring intonation is iStroboSoft, which I think to be the most accurate. And then, once that is done, I will play a short excerpt so you can get an idea about any tone quality changes or how the intonation changes will affect the horn in practice. Let's dive right in. <laughs>
so now that you've heard all of that, here are some of my observations from behind the horn. Overall, I would say that the Series 3 neck is a little bit more free-blowing than either one of the Supreme necks. I thought it was pretty impressive how, regardless of plating or finish, the Supreme necks were actually relatively consistent in terms of playing characteristic from one to the next. I did find that the solid silver neck maybe just had a little extra pinch of brilliance or brightness in the lowest notes especially. It was most apparent when the horn was vibrating a lot. So that tells me either it was a really subtle change for the listener, or most of that perceived change is because of how the player is receiving vibrations through the horn, through their teeth, into their skull and inner ear, a little bit differently than a standard brass neck. I found the gold-plated neck to be a little bit warmer than the silver neck by comparison, only because I think it's made of brass instead of solid silver. I don't think the gold plating itself had much of an effect at all. That being said, there really is no substitute for the aesthetics that a gold plate neck can offer, and there might be other listeners out there that find the plating to make an especially big difference for them, so really it's about what works best for you and what makes you happy. In addition to some of the tonal tweaks, I found that the Supreme necks both offered wonderful improvements in intonation as well as evenness of scale and tone quality across all of the registers. Something I noticed is that the new necks tend to have a higher pitch center than my Series 3 neck. And that's actually pretty similar to like the Series 2 necks. I think the biggest thing that really struck me was the consistency with which that all of the necks played. I actually have four necks here, but only felt the need to show two to you on video because they all generally played with roughly the same characteristics from one to the next. More machining is involved in the creation of these necks than in prior generations of Selmer horns. When comparing these two eras of necks, there are a few small tweaks in the manufacturer that might capture your interest. Selmer has gone a long way to remove excess mass from newer necks, and that's been an effort that started since about 2010 with the release of the Jubilee horns. Um, but there have been a little bit of tweaking before then as well. So this is an original Series 3 neck, and you'll see that in addition to the very heavy looking octave mechanism, you'll see that there is actually a guide rail for the octave pip to travel, which is sort of unnecessary and adds an, a bit of extra weight. A lot of the newer Selmer necks have removed these components. So if you look on one of the newer necks, there is no guide rail here, which lightens the neck a bit, as well as removes the possibility of the octave key hitting that guide rail. And also the mechanism that uh, attaches the neck to the octave key is much lighter and simpler. When looking inside the necks, there oftentimes can be a really prominent ridge inside. When you run your finger over it, you can sometimes feel a strong lip that can cause an abrasion on your finger. However, on the newer necks, that's not true. On the older necks, you can see it on mine. There's quite a prominent ring in there and I can actually feel that when I run my finger over it, and that's gonna cause turbulence in the air. Finally, Selmer has gone out of their way to talk about automating the final boring of the saxophone neck right here at the end. Um, it's kind of hard to show on camera because it's a really small detail, but if you hold it really close up, you can see um, sometimes on these necks there's machining marks that look like little spirals that are in there. It's less prominent on these newest necks, so I think they're continuing to refine the process to make it look more seamless. However, that tells me that more machines are involved in the creation of these really sensitive entry and exit points for these necks. Whereas if you look on the old necks, there are no machining marks, and sometimes you can see seams where the necks have been hammered together. And I know it's a really difficult thing to see on camera, but if you have one in person, you'll definitely notice it. Overall, I think the Supreme necks offer a lot of improvements for older Selmer horns, and I highly recommend you try one out if you own another model, such as a Series 3, a Series 2, or a Reference 54, and want to get some of the benefits of the Selmer Supreme saxophone without paying for an entirely new horn. For me, this is especially important because I've gotten really accustomed to this keywork that's on my Series 3, and I'd have a hard time 
transitioning to another horn and having to get used to a whole other set of ergonomics. While I'm not buying any of these necks today, it definitely piques my interest and I'll probably be interested in checking out either a lacquered neck or a silver plated neck in the future. Anyway, I appreciate you tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this comparison and I will see you in the next one.